Hello, hi everyone. Um, welcome to our e-invoicing webinar today. So it's very happy to have all of you here. And this is actually one of our first ever webinar hosted by Abuku. Hopefully more to come. Um, very quick introduction. Like um, today, if you don't already know me, I'm Jay, one of the co-founders here at Abuku Accounting. So we are just about to get started with the session already. All right, let's go. So uh, first thing first, uh, just trying to build out some credibility here. So in case you don't know who I who am I, so um, I actually co-founded Buku Accounting, all right, which is currently the fastest growing accounting software in Malaysia, all right. And I have personally uh, nine years uh, experience in building accounting software, and in total I have like about seventeen years uh, experience in uh, building and designing. Uh, enterprise software. So I also have a lot of experience designing GSD systems specifically for Malaysia and Singapore as well as the Malaysia SSD system. All right. So what to expect today? All right. So very excited all of you. I can see that. So I won't be actually, um, I mean, today's session is going to be conducted in English, obviously. All right. And, and this is going to be about one and a half hour session. All right. I'm trying to I, I will try my best to contend within one and a half hour, but it actually is subject to how many questions that we'll be getting uh, today, uh, which is also a reminder, we will have a Q&A session uh, after the session is like uh, done with the session. Okay, so today's session is mainly based on the latest guidelines from LHDN, okay? Specifically, e-invoice guideline 2.1, e-invoice specific guideline 1.1, as well as e-invoice catalog. Okay, all of these are like published just recently. So you are definitely getting the first-hand uh, information about the latest uh, movement into uh, e-invoice. It's really coming soon, huh? all right? So as I mentioned just now, Q&A session after uh, I'm, I concluded my presentation, okay? Uh, you can already put in your questions and I will try to come back to that as soon as possible, all right? Okay, just put it in a, uh, comment box lah, basically. So, um, just checking if you have come to the right place today, right? Today we are targeting mainly business owners as well as some concerned individuals. Trust me, you are not being left out. It e-invoicing is actually for everyone. Okay, so surprisingly, yeah. So and for those that hasn't actually read the uh, FHDN e-invoicing guideline that I mentioned just now. Okay, or you have actually read but have problem following or you simply don't have time to read the 180 pages guidelines. So this is the perfect um, session for you. And in fact, something that I forgot to mention just now, this is what you won't be expecting today is like a four hour session and you won't be actually needing to pay for anything here. And the, the idea of today's session is we are trying to condense everything. I understand everyone is busy today. A lot of you are like business owner. And I can see a lot of our partners as well from accounting firms. So yeah, I don't want to waste your time. Okay, so just get to the point, one and a half hour, and you should know everything that you are supposed to know about e-invoicing. Okay, all right. So jumping into the very quick, very, very quickly, yeah? All right, we're jumping into the, the topic already. Who needs to issue e-invoice, okay? so. It's all the taxpayers undertaking commercial activities in Malaysia, okay? Everyone, huh? we're talking about really everyone. For businesses specifically, we are talking about all industries. Unlike the GST or even SST, and if you know about it, it's only for certain industry. But this time, the government is serious and this is for all, all of you, okay? Businesses, including certain uh, individuals like what I highlighted here, if you are like doing some home baking, then you are likely also included, not being left out uh, from this invoicing initiative. Lah. Okay, so as I mentioned just now, all industry, no threshold at all. So the only ones that are exempted are rulers. Okay, I'm not talking about the ruler on your table, but the rulers as in the kings as well as the soldans in, in, in the country. Lah. Okay. So if you are also like government sector, then most likely you are not as affected, right? Meaning to say you are exempted for this uh, e-invoicing, at least for now, right? In the future, we don't know yet, but from what we can see here, it's uh, explicitly mentioned that it's excluded, lah. okay? So um, the impact, 
right just now i mentioned like who is actually needing to actually issue invoice and all that is like everyone right so i wanted to tell you a little bit like what's the impact okay so just now i already give you a hint it's not just for businesses it's also for individuals exactly my first point here all individuals or anyone legal entities in malaysia need to comply and what is the difference when i say comply with uh, what i mentioned just now you need to issue invoices okay complies means that it's whether you uh it's like it's a broader term as in you need to request for e invoice okay individuals that you are you actually needed to e to actually request invoice that then you are affected lah. i mean you need to comply with that okay why do you actually need to request for e invoice in the in the future okay because that is an official way of proving your expenses okay we are talking about dealing with rhdm all right so the tax authority obviously in malaysia so of course all right so the e invoicing is surrounding okay so uh, tracking your expenses and your income and all that so that having said that it's like everyone affected lah okay and the impact i just want to highlight here the impact really go beyond uh, gst era in if you can recall 2015 okay because the difference that i would like to highlight here is uh, there's no revenue threshold like sst or gst uh, it's like 500 dollars thousand and below you don't have to pay i mean you don't have to even register okay but e-invoicing is for everyone okay no uh, no revenue threshold no industry is exempted yes gst some of them are exempted you don't have to do anything with it okay and uh, the, the very important part i right? although you are running businesses you are also consumer from on from an, another end right so uh like last time gst there was virtually no impact to you unless unless you're talking about you have to fork out another six percent that's the only impact and what other than that is just you will see the additional line gst six percent okay and also sst six percent okay and like besides that there's like virtually nothing for any consumers right but right now it's different okay you will be needing to actually comply okay so that is the difference that uh, we're talking about lah. okay so um, when is e-invoice needed okay from a seller perspective right let's say you are a business owner you're selling something obviously you need e-invoice just to prove your income okay because all right before this is all paper uh, even handwritten right is accepted but moving forward uh, unfortunately you can't do that anymore so you need the e-invoice is all tracked in the system by yourself you have a copy hdn also have a copy okay so that is from a seller perspective from a buyer perspective obviously you need to prove your expenses you want to actually get some um, tax exemption of course you need to prove like it's not like just he say she say anymore you need to prove that and the LHDM will have a record okay so this actually um, so if you are like trying to find out the difference between uh, now and then it's basically e-invoice replaces the all the existing physical copy of your receipts that you are getting on a daily basis as well as a soft copy right if you have already moved on from uh, the physical copies right uh, even the, the, the soft copy you can basically throw away uh, in the near future okay so and and i the the next important point that i want to highlight here is actually do you all know what is the end game for government okay so again I'm, i don't want to actually uh, this is just a guess uh, all right so that's why I, I i make a disclaimer here i think this is what i think right the end game of introducing e-invoicing is that in the in the future or eventually that we're talking about there will no longer be a need for tax return every year okay if you can record what do you do every april you will be busy like like submitting the, the the tax return okay so that you can claim back certain certain amount of your tax right so that's what you will be doing uh, i mean what have you have been doing but moving forward we're talking about the end the final goal from government this is what i think there isn't a need for that anymore okay if well during the transition period let's say you are still you still needed to actually um, uh, provide or, or actually do the tax uh, return right so if we're talking about in return okay 
uh, I mean in, in between. Okay, so after the introduction of the e invoice, so there's no you can you you can no longer cheat. Okay, I mean w when we started having e invoice, you can no longer cheat. You cannot just tell the government like okay, I am going to claim that the five thousand whatever tax uh, assumptions that I have, but you need to prove that. Okay, uh, so if it's everything in the system, all right, you cannot say oh five thousand, but then in e, e invoicing system in LHDNC system is only two thousand, so you can no longer run away for all this lah. Okay, so I think it's a it's a way to track uh, Rakyat's income more efficiently without introducing things like GST. Okay, because I mean I think the the, the, the whole idea is the same, right? So they are trying to reduce the revenue leakage or the tax leakage from the government. Okay, without going into GST, of course, there's a lot of more, it's a more serious impact for all the rakyats. So that's why they actually decided to push the accelerate button for the uh, invoice. Okay, um, I think a lot of you have seen it before. I'm just going to quickly go through uh, this uh, implementation timeline again. Okay, so. Um, specifically, yeah, uh, this is mostly for businesses. Okay, so it's by looking at how much you are currently making as a business whole year. Okay, we're talking about whole year. You usually it's following your financial year la, or your calendar year. Okay, so if you are making uh, more than hundred million per annum and beyond, okay, the implementation is just next year. Okay, in one year time, actually less than less than a year. So you have you better be hurry and call your software vendor and try to find out more. So first of August, you need to start like complying. All right, start issuing invoice already. If you are like making more than twenty five million per annum, okay, ringgit ah, okay, then it the the start date would be just a few months later. Okay, like four or five months later. 1st of January 2015. That is the day that you need to start all right, issuing uh, e-invoice. Okay, and for everyone else, we're talking about even you are just making one cent, uh, it's you are included. Okay, 01 July 2015. Okay, so that is like uh, one and a half year or less. Okay, you need to start issuing invoice already. Okay, so but which year should you refer to? Okay, so it's very clear that the uh, inland revenue stated it's following your financial year 2022 which is already ended okay it's the, the latest that you could have the financial year 2022 is ending 31st December 2022 okay if your financial year is ending July so you have already most likely concluded re your revenue so you can now go and figure out whether uh, or on which day you, you need to start issuing e invoice already okay so this is the the, the, the timeline okay a little bit more extension from the, the the timeline in between okay the first batch of people i mean the businesses that need to actually start issuing invoice until the last batch so the the, the this period is what we call the transition period first of august 2024 to 30th, 30th of july 2025 so this is called transition period okay and what does it mean all other taxpayer you can still use normal receipts. You can choose. I mean, if you're already in the game, of course you have to do the validated one. But if you as a recipient, we are talking about, let's say the, the business is ready to issue you e-invoice and you say yes, of course, of course you can go ahead. If, if not, you can continue to take in the normal receipt. Okay, and it's still valid. Okay, if you want to submit for tax and everything, or you want to prove your expenses, it is still a valid thing okay of course there's a point here that you can actually volunteer right if you are making one cent or one hundred thousand or less you can already start following everyone that's making hundred million and beyond you can start as soon as possible okay so it's entirely uh, up to you if your business like just started recently Okay, your business like just started after because we're talking about uh, financial year 2022, which is already done. Okay, if you have just started your business like this year, 2023, anytime, okay, anytime, it doesn't matter. Your start date will be following like anyone else. The last, the, the third row that you saw just now, okay, first, which is 1st of July, uh, 2025, okay. Okay, so um, 
how do you actually how do you deal with uh, e-invoice how do you issue an e-invoice uh, if you're wondering there are actually two ways so i think a lot of you have already seen some of the gurus mentioning online but just uh, go through again and hopefully you can find something else that was not mentioned before okay obviously uh, lhdn is going to prepare or uh, get ready with a portal it's called my invoice portal okay and that is open for everyone okay as long as you are a taxpayer or not you can actually use it lah. okay so this is actually more specifically in my opinion designed for micro or small enterprises or businesses with no proper access to a proper systems like accounting or invoicing point of sale system then you can definitely use uh, this uh, portal lah. okay and it's actually hosted by uh, LHDN okay meaning to say it's a website it's not a it's not a software but very likely uh, it will actually come with a mobile apps from what I, I heard, hear from uh, LHDN okay and it's obviously uh, provided for free okay there's no charges at all you can actually get started like with uh, zero entry level lah, okay and the next one is the next mechanism the, the, another way that you can submit or actually issue e invoice is by going through API okay for those that are not familiar with API it doesn't matter okay the idea is like using some kind of software which is already integrated with LHDN on your behalf helping you to actually integrate lah. okay so um, um, like accounting software point of sale system ERP system whatever software that can already or you have to check with your vendor lah. of course for Buku we are going to be integrating for sure but you have to check with your vendor and make sure that um, how is it going to be like okay any fees involved in like getting ready for the e-invoice so you have to ask all these questions all right so for this approach it's usually for the SMEs for the current SMEs that's already having uh, some kind of software accounting point of sales invoicing whatever okay so so with this you can actually issue invoices in your current software and the software will actually do the 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 all the work for you to actually connect to actually send the data to uh, IRD, IRDM's um, server through an API okay and then uh, the, during the process everything is supposed to happen behind the scene to actually perform the validation okay from the software itself okay if you are SME but if you are much larger scale uh, businesses okay there's a there's a chance that you might already have a, some in-house software or even programmers so of course you can still go with this approach but it will be a bit different lah, in, instead of relying on the software vendor you are likely going to build your own okay so the the api documentation and all that will be open for everyone it's not just selected uh, software vendors okay so uh, before i forget right api stands for it's it stands for application uh, provider interface or similar something similar i couldn't quite recall but the idea is that it actually connects between two software right it's like one software talking to another software in exchange of uh, data so that is the meaning of uh, api okay so if you are larger scale businesses most likely you can actually deal with it yourself lah, okay um in terms of the document types okay hdn has already uh, clearly stated that these four other uh, documents that you need to submit to uh, e invoice framework Okay, the first one obviously is invoice. Any invoices that you're going to issue uh, needs to be uh, 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 following the guideline. Credit note as well, right? If you're making some uh, adjustment, you want to reduce the amount, you want to return of goods or certain things, right? Credit note is also uh, one of the document types, as well as debit note, right? Debit note is on top of any invoices that you want to adjust, you want to increase, then you can actually use a uh, uh, debit note. Lah okay for refund is actually here right so if you're not familiar so this is actually like when you have a cancelled services or return goods that's already paid okay if you are not paid of course you can use it. Uh, credit not but we're talking about uh, whatever uh, invoice is a done deal you have already paid I mean your client have already paid you have no choice but to issue an invoice uh, a refund uh, receipt over here lah. okay so that is the invoice uh, invoice document types uh, supported by uh, LHDN okay so in getting ready to this e-invoice this is happening in like 10 months okay so there are two things that I would like to highlight here you need to get ready okay you can even start like 
getting ready today uh, not quite for this one lah, okay so but then let me explain you will be given a digital certificate far okay a bit technical but don't worry it's just like a document like as a identifier okay every one of you or different taxpayer you will be given a certificate a digital certificate it's a far it's a document it's a digital far that you can save in your computer okay this is actually used for trans uh, online transactions okay this is of course right now used for the e-invoice purposes lah. okay so this is a bit like a digital signature that can uh, needs to be attached to your future e-invoices okay they will be giving giving you a file and that file is needed it's actually used to issue e-invoice so that it can be used to validate whether this e-invoice is actually uh, a valid one or not okay and this is very likely or i can confirm lah, okay issued and provided by, by rhdn okay they will provide you before the implementation of i mean but before the e-invoicing is going live most likely uh I'm just guessing, but very likely that you can retrieve from the current my tax portal or the upcoming my invoice portal. Okay, you can get the file. You can actually download the file from there. Or if you are using more my invoice, I don't think there's a need for you to actually even download the file because it's already included in the ecosystem. Okay, so that is one of the first thing that you need to get ready. Right, you should be getting ready for that. Once that is out, you can immediately go and look for it. The second thing is like some of you have heard of, about it and it's not just for e-invoicing but also from other initiative related to RHDN. This is called uh, PIN number okay, or uh, full name tax identification number. It's a unique number assigned to you. Okay? You only, okay? Each one, every single one of you, you will be assigned with a, a, a unique uh, tax number. Okay? This one also I think you can already retrieve it as of today and this is also known as I mean they're just doing a bit of rebranding lah. it used to call ITN which is income tax number so they, they decided to, to uh, play around with the arrangement it's now called TIN or in Malay it's called Nombo Chukai Pendapatan okay and this is uh, you can see there's an example being given here okay so this is how it looks like okay um, yeah these two things okay only these two are needed okay for you to actually perform an e-invoice submission okay so let me also quickly go through like how is it going to like to be like of course we none of you none of us none of us have actually seen the interface uh, about the my upcoming my invoice portal unless you're working in rhdn okay so this is just some uh, information that was being shared by uh, by the income tax uh, authority okay so in terms of issuing e-invoice okay four steps okay quite straightforward okay you as a supplier i mean we are talking about supplier issuing e-invoice so you need to say stay comply with this right supplier you need to create a uh, invoice and you can do it with my e my e invoice portal okay you go in you create your e invoice just following all the all the fields like just put in all the fields okay and then uh, the whole thing will be once you click save button it will get it will be validated okay i mean irbn will be validating the e invoices everything is good and an, a unique identifier number will be generated okay so that number is specific for that e invoice e invoice okay okay and from there the hdn will also notify supplier and and the buyer okay both sides they will notify that a new e invoice has been validated so all these two are actually done in like almost real time according to hdn okay so um and then um uh, uh, hdn is actually asking us to actually share the validated e invoice with the buyer okay that concludes the the the, the flow of e issuing invoice e invoice moving forward although it's a bit unclear because if you look at the third point right um, the system has already notified um, the buyer and supplier in almost real time so what is actually not mentioned there is if um, the system has already shared 
the the full detail of the e-invoice, then basically there's no need for the fourth point line. That's 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 my own opinion. Okay, uh, otherwise it's a bit uh, repetitive to actually have uh, the fourth point. Okay, perhaps I, I got something wrong. I'm not sure. Okay, so just uh, something that we need to clarify with uh, the authority later. Okay, so that is the issuance of uh, e-invoice, but okay, very important. Huh? It's it's going to change the whole. The workflow is, is going to be changed okay because it's stated that right as a buyer if you buy something right if i'm selling you something i will issue you an invoice right you will get a notification somehow with uh, through email even you don't have any system you will definitely get notified because the system has your email address you will get notified by email then from there if you do not agree with the e-invoice that you are receiving okay you can actually request for rejection okay uh, pay attention to the terms used here request for rejection within 72 hours you have to do it within 72 hours otherwise it's no more okay and when you are you want you are actually doing this uh, request you need to state the, the reason like okay uh, wrong item example okay so this thing will be sent uh, using uh, I mean through the system it will be sent to the seller okay the system will notify the seller in almost real time okay and it's up to the seller okay seller gets like up to 72 hours to to react okay so for this case is that I mean the assumption is that the seller agree with you that the item is minimum wrong okay then they can actually click the cancel button okay so it's like never happened before of course there's a record there lah. the whole invoice is now cancelled okay then from there uh, the system will send to the buyer telling you okay this is now successfully cancelled okay so this is pay attention uh, this is the accepted one and why did I mention to you that you need to pay attention to this request for rejection it's not straight away reject you cannot simply reject in the future okay you need to get a uh, seller's consent okay seller needs to say yes otherwise what will happen look let's look at the next one okay um, the buyer same thing uh, you as a buyer request for the rejection within 72 hours and you did state a, a reason which you think is fair but the seller has the right to reject it I mean reject the rejection okay so this is the rejected case okay so if they do not cancel the, the e-invoice within 72 hours automatically this, uh, this whole invoice will be reverted back to valid after automatically after 72 hours meaning to say the seller they don't they, they, do, they don't even have to do anything right they just leave it there and then it will automatically change back to valid alternatively they can definitely accept the rejection okay so that is where immediately it will actually cancel but if they uh, by the way uh, sorry it they can also directly reject the the rejection okay sorry i got it i got confused uh, just now the seller can reject your request okay so if they do that immediately the e-invoice will be will be changed back to a valid okay so what's the problem here that i'm seeing okay so buyer moving forward you cannot directly reject any in, in, incoming invoices okay so i think this could be some kind of a loophole i i don't know there's no mention about it so let's see if we can actually get into some kind of uh, conversation with the authority and then we'll try to we'll try to clarify for uh, our users uh, in the future lah. okay so um that is if you are using the my invoice portal right but what if you're using a software example of course i'm coming from google accounting so i'll be sharing from a accounting software perspective and more precisely from google accounting uh, software perspective how is it going to be like okay moving forward if you are using some kind of software like Google accounting in terms of issuing in e invoice right so as a supplier you, you will just create the invoice just like usual like usual okay and then of course there are something some things that you need to do before you need to put in their team number you need to put in their their addresses and everything into the system before you can actually create an invoice in the system moving forward lah. And once that is done, you can just issue invoice like normal. Okay, then the system are supposed to take care for most of the things on behalf of you. You just issue invoice like normal. Click on the button. Of course, there will be a 
some kind of indicator do you want to issue an e-invoice yes or no right if you put yes click on the save button system will do everything for you okay the system will send a signal to uh, LHDN to create the e-invoice to validate on behalf of you and then on receiving the the positive feedbacks from the servers right and it will be reflected in the system okay that is the first step and the second step is that from Boku side okay from the software perspective we will send the validated e-invoice to the buyer okay yeah to your customer basically and the buyer gets notified like real time if the buyer is not using Boku right let's say they will get it through the standard workflow right they will get an e email they will get IRD, uh, IRBN's notification which is exactly almost exactly like the my invoice portal okay if they are not Boku users if the buyer is also a Boku user the the, the business itself the the the, the buying company's um, using system is Boku right then you will receive an in-app notification okay uh, if you it's a bit hard for you to visualize I have a, a quick screenshot to actually share with you this is a, some kind of prototype that we have already started working on in getting ready for this upcoming e-invoice so this is something that uh, as a buyer this is a recipient that let's say they are using Buku right okay then they will get a notification like this Right, so saying that okay you have received an invoice of how much from your supplier click on it you can see everything and then from there of course you can do exactly everything that you saw just now you can re you can request for reject you can just leave it there all right whatever that you can do in my invoice you are supposed to be able to do it in your accounting system or any other system including the point of sale system I suppose that is the case lah. okay so that is the the whole e-invoice workflow fairly straightforward okay so um, in terms of uh, if you are the seller okay what are the information that needs to be obtained um, by the seller okay uh, by year information you need to get their full name first thing first and the name needs to be following the IC exactly IC or, or passport if you is a foreigner or uh, following your registration lah, if you are actually uh, a business entity okay you definitely need to have some kind of uh, ID with you okay which is the TIN number I think the primary thing that we are looking at is definitely the TIN number okay so uh, I've listed down very clearly for Malaysians all right your buyers are Malaysians right you ask for the TIN number or the my card number either one okay you can take TIN number you can take my my, my card okay you don't have you don't need both lah. it's a waste of time you do not need both for non-Malaysians, right, it just happened that someone uh, come to you is from I don't know Australia or any other countries, right? Okay, you will also be needing a TIN number. Although, of course, like you you might be wanting to ask already. Hey, this is foreigner. How can they even have a TIN number uh, generated by uh, HDN? Of course, that's not the case, lah. We are talking about a generic TIN number. That will be made available it's already there if you need the number I can even give you now okay it's a specific pin number given by LHDN all the foreigners just use the same number okay so you can just save it at uh, one of the places lah. okay and right pin number that is like a bit meaningless like if, in my opinion it's always the same thing just to identify this is a foreigner right oh, and also their passport number okay if we're talking about e-invoice uh, we're not talking about a normal receipt then we're talking about yes you need to ask for their passport number that is for non-malaysians okay for businesses okay if you're dealing with businesses t number lah, of, of course okay you need to get their t number okay and not even registration number t number only for foreign businesses generic t number also given by rhdn okay so this is the things that you need to actually be aware full address you need to get full address postcode uh, country the, the the street um the, the state and everything okay the full address we're talking about here contact number okay a contactable usually mobile number lah. email address very important you need to you need to have the email address because all the notification is going to go to your email email mailbox so definitely you need the email address 
okay SST registration number Malaysia only if you are SST registered then you need to actually ask for the I mean your client is SST registered you need to ask for the SST registration number lah okay so these are the information okay what about this okay when exactly do you need to issue an e-invoice as a business okay a quick question huh? you can start thinking about it now I'm going to review the answer in just like one or two seconds so the answer is I don't know whether it's fortunate or unfortunate it's always as a business you have to issue e-invoice at all time don't care whether you are a hawker you are I mean uh, selling something in hawker center uh, you are like roadside selling runny burger you have to issue e invoice unfortunately i mean if that means a lot of work for you then it's unfortunate unfortunate news lah okay when a buyer okay don't get confused ah okay there is a way that there are certain cases where the buyer can just tell you i do not need an e invoice you see the whole point of having e invoice is that they want to use that to prove their income prove their expenses what if we're talking about like me going to a grocery shop buying something random do i need to ask for an invoice i don't think so it's a waste of time for me i don't need to prove that you know, two ringgit ice cream right to hdn that I, I actually spend it uh, it's not going to be used for any other purposes okay if that is the case if the buyer like don't need and this one most likely happens to the retail businesses lah, okay you can continue to issue normal receipts no changes in whatever system that you're using even if they are not, not going to comply with the e invoice you can still use it okay you can still use it but there, there's a twist there's a there's a twi twist uh. you have to issue consolidated e invoice okay one whole day you have 100 you 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 actually make 100 sales right through your point of sale system okay and none of them actually ask for the e invoice so you just issue like normal lah okay no changes to your operation but you have to somehow i mean system are supposed to help you with that consolidate everything for the entire day for the entire month 30 30 31 days compile everything together into a consolidated e-invoice issue to who you have so many different uh customers okay issue to uh, a team number a, a generic team number also uh, called general public it's like a cash sales kind of concept lah. they call it differently okay issue to a t number called general public okay and when do you need to do that within seven days you're only given seven days to do that let's say generally you have concluded immediately your system needs to start helping you to prepare whatever not finalized you better finalize soon because within seven days you need to issue the consolidated e-invoice how are you going to issue e uh, this e uh, consolidated e-invoice okay using a my invoice portal or using your system okay if you're using accounting system okay fine if you're using policy system by right they should be uh, providing you a way to click uh, one button to actually compile everything and and helping you to to submit lah. okay your policy system needs to be connected to the internet already okay so that is the uh, moving forward all right so just to give you an idea on how it looks like okay so this is also provided by rhdm right the consolidated one you can pay attention to this part this is exactly what like what i mentioned just now and this is already decided uh, the buyer t number is a generic one for the, your entire month okay so this is going to be uh, issuing to i mean the e invoice is issuing to a general public lah. so the description is a consolidated like whatever item that you sold throughout the entire month okay of course if you have multiple branches you can actually break it down a little bit the uh, LHDN is quite open for this you can choose to combine everything you can choose to uh, separate line by line you can choose to separate by different branches everything is good you can do whatever you want okay as long as it's con consolidated as long as the most important thing you are submitting to uh, uh, LHDN that is good enough
okay so this is how it looks like okay and all this in case you're wondering these are all used for validation purpose lah. and this is the signature some kind of signature that i talked about just now each and every one of you will have some kind of signature and this is something that they can scan on the qr to validate anyone that come across this uh, e-invoice they can use this qr to validate whether this is a valid one or this is actually a fake one okay just now we talk about consolidated e-invoice retail businesses yeah okay there are certain activities that doesn't allow consolidated e-invoices clearly stated right if you're falling under any of this unfortunately you have to get your customer to queue up to fill up uh, i mean to type in all the information stated earlier okay pin number addresses contact number email address so you have to find a way to improve that lah, which is something that i'll be talking about shortly automotive selling cars motorcycles you have to issue uh, the real the actual e-invoice not the consolidated one to each and every one of your customer of aviation okay very specific yeah okay i don't think a lot of you are in this uh, industry but some of you might be luxury goods uh, yes perhaps some of you uh, luxury goods and jewelries um, construction okay wholesaler and retailer of construction materials so these are also related to uh, construction license betting and gaming okay or well, unlikely anyone here okay payment to agents dealers distributors okay this is something that i will talk about uh, shortly this is quite common uh. this is one of the most most common one that a lot of you might be dealing with it's kind of some kind of a, a middleman okay they are making living out of like commission like if you're selling a car you get a commission right so that is related to this one lah. okay so can the buyer request for e-invoice later like going back to the same uh, example that i mentioned just now all right the buyer says no need later can they come back to you and say can i have the e-invoice i overlook okay the answer is yes okay if on the first of january i i went to your house uh, your shop to buy something without asking for the e-invoice you can continue to issue me a normal invoice just that you need to do the consolidated one at the end of the, the month lah. okay but in between i figure out yes i need to f i need to actually use that for for to prove my in my my expenses okay for hdn later then i give you a call all right you are supposed to say yes you can come i help i will i will, I will show you a way to actually do it you i can do that i mean if i request for that i can do it within the same calendar month okay is if the transaction happens in the first of january the latest i can do is 31st january midnight after that the the it's up to the the business owner the business whether they want to entertain or not later i will mention you cannot like in finite in the future like ask for the the uh, request for e-invoice in a one year ago two year ago you can't do that right it's not that straightforward okay so how can you actually request for um, the e-invoice later as a buyer as a consumer let's say you really needed that thing okay and it's going to be quite troublesome for the buyer to entertain your your call imagine that okay so of course it, these are all well, well thought of right for this okay the seller are supposed to provide some kind of platform okay some kind of platform imagine if i were to call you i want the e-invoice you can pass me a link online link i click on that i can submit myself that is the idea okay you need to provide with that kind of system which is likely going to be provided by your point of sale system your accounting software including ourselves okay so don't worry about it it will be provided uh, you just have to make sure that is happening lah. if you are building your own system then you need to be careful that this is something that you need to be doing in case someone wants to convert a normal invoice into the e-invoice for whatever purpose you cannot say no okay that's their right but within the same month why am i saying that same month and why is the rules of one uh, same month because you need to as a buyer sorry as a seller you need to provide the consolidated one the following month uh, in seven days don't forget about it so whatever not converted whatever normal invoices needs to be included in the consolidated one okay which is something that you can start preparing on the first of the following month okay but as soon as 
these are some of the uh, some of the transactions are converted into a normal e invoice that needs to be excluded for the, from the uh, from the consolidated one okay so that's why I, I was saying that it's up to the the, the seller okay it's, if it's like just uh, one hour past the the deadline okay you they might still entertain your your request as long as they haven't compiled the consolidated one but FDN is saying clearly it's entirely up to the business owner it's entirely up to the business you can reject but within the same month you cannot say no if they request you have to give find a way to give them the the e invoice to generate the e invoice okay so just to give you the idea on how is it going to be like okay imagine you are issuing invoice this is actually pulled from our system huh? an accounting system imagine you are not issuing normal invoice in the future anyone that doesn't need the e invoice so this is stated here that this is a normal invoice but you need to or the system that you use needs to provide them a way to convert into e invoice this is it okay click on the link or qr code they can scan they can request while they are at home without needing to trouble you okay so that is going to be the approach moving forward lah, right for the request for e-invoice at a later stage if they never ask for the e-invoice okay so you might be thinking right so it's quite a hassle right if you are run, running some kind of uh, businesses that it's a lot of your customer will be needing an e-invoice i can give you an example back in my hometown i have came across a very popular shop selling car parts spare parts okay and from my observation because they are popular because their they are, they are price is very very low okay to the extent that all the car workshop owners are also buying the car parts from that shop and they are queuing up to buy so imagine all the people queuing up are businesses of course they need an e invoice lah. it's not like oh never mind okay how do you go about that right because just now there was so many uh, information needed for that kind of thing right okay so yes if that is the case how are you going to do uh, go about okay I'm giving you a tips here okay so this is something that uh, having long enough in the industry uh, we think this is the best approach if you are running some kind of businesses that having a, a long queue for people but people queuing up for e invoice moving forward okay so if you're running a very busy businesses with most of your customers wanting e invoice which is exactly the case two um, tips i can give you get the client to preview their particulars before their visit okay get it done first once they come okay scan the qr immediately everything is populated in the system that's approach number one approach number two issue normal invoices ask them don't worry okay i give you the normal invoices there's a qr you go back and, and convert into e-invoice later that way it will have minimal impact to your operation okay so that is some tips that i can think of all right to give you uh if you're running some kind of businesses as mentioned here lah. okay so it's roughly uh halfway through okay i think we are another half uh, we, we, we have another 10 slides to go so I would like to suggest for a, a very quick uh, commercial break so I will come back you guys can also take a break I'll come back in like about one or two minutes okay I'll see you guys in a while all right Eh, lu bolong bayar utang. Saya pelepen. Eh, you never send invoice or so? No invoice means no proof we do businesses. Huh? This is Longko. He's an along that sucks at his business. Eh, hey, what invoice, invoice or? I already asked him to pay in voice message ma. Eh, uh, phone, phone, phone. Oi, bayar hutang apa? However, it is not just his customers that are making Longko's business hard. <laughs> Whack him nice nice, huh? Hey, Tyler, I got something to claim. Oh. Um, 
This is the pin and the spanner I bought. Claim ah? Hmm. Hey, Tyro, I also claim the one claim the petrol eh. Claim so far, just to claim eh. Ah. Uh, petrol? Yeah. Oh. Okay. Unfortunately, Long Kong is a manko. <laughs> you think Lim Bei got study account ah? I study science stream one. Luckily for Long Kong, I have a solution for all his problems. Introducing Buku. Ah. Oh, Buku, I know. Bukan Pukul, Buku. <laughs> Buku is a fast and easy cloud accounting software that quickly generates your invoices. Once you send the invoice, your customer can easily pay by clicking the Pay Now button. Nah, saya sudah send you invoice ah. Just press Pay Now to transfer online. Uh, uh, next week, okay ah. Next week ah. Can lah, can lah, can lah. Besides, you can also upload your receipts into the digital shoebox and Buku will automatically record your company expenses. Buku is suitable for all SMEs. Still hesitant? Don't worry, because there's a 90 days trial for you to have a taste of what Buku offers. Jangan risau, buku boleh settle. Okay, welcome back guys. So let's continue with where we left off just now. Okay, so um, let me give you some um, case study. Yeah, started getting a lot of questions coming in. Don't worry, I'll come back to that as soon as we're done with this session. I actually have a lot of answers for all that. Do I need to bring IC or TIN number for ordering my lunch at food court? As a consumer, huh? now think of you as a consumer. I want you to think, right? Do I need to bring IC or TIN number uh, if I'm just like buying something from food court? So before you say yes or no, you just have to ask yourself, do you need the receipt to be validated you yourself for tax purpose as a consumer? If the answer is no, then it's virtually no changes for you. Whatever that you have been doing, continue to do the same, okay? But for the store owner, if you are the one serving the food, giving the food, I mean selling the food, right? You of course have to issue the consolidated one because your customers, most of them never ask for e-invoice. So you have to do that consolidated one at the end of the month, okay? Not at the end of the month, seven days, okay? Seven days given. Let's go with an, an, a, a twist, okay? How about your company's team lunch at the same food court, okay, you are having a very tight budget. It's the same food court that you're dealing with, the same store owner. How about this? Okay, same thing. You just have to ask yourself, right? Because this is for team lunch, right? So most likely this is actually uh, engineered by the manager. So manager, all right, so you need to like uh, claim, far for claim, okay? You need to actually be recorded in the company expenses, right? So, so you just have to ask the, yourself the same question. If the answer is yes, if the answer is yes, like you need that receipt, right? If you need the e-invoice to prove your expenses, okay? You have two options. You have two options here. One is you request for the uh, for the e-invoice on the spot. Like ask the store owner, I'm here is my detail. I give you everything. Give me the e-invoice on the spot. Okay, that's option number one. Option number two, make sure there is a way to convert a normal invoice into an e-invoice at a later day. Exactly like what I shared with you just now, the, the interface is already there. A link, a QR code for them to convert it later. Okay, of course, the second one sounds better to me. Lah. Okay, but what is unclear is that can, can the can the consumer request, die die, I want the e-invoice now. Do not give me later. This is not mentioned clearly, okay? This is some loose ends that also needs to be ironed out with LHDN, okay? I would say definitely as long as you provide 
a way, I think it, it sounds more fair that as long as you provide a way to actually convert later, it should be fine. Okay, just what I do know is can they reject that? Okay, can you or can can the consumer ask for it on the spot and you say I give you later? So these are a bit of an uncertainty that needs to be figured out later. Lah. Okay, so just some uh, case study. Okay, something new. Okay, if you are not in the industry, this is like totally like a stranger to you. Or what is even self bill e invoice? Like freaking crazy. Okay. Like all the while we talk about, e-invoice is usually issued by supplier. Okay, nothing to do with the buyer. Okay, but other cert under certain circumstances, the buyer is allowed to issue self-built e-invoice on behalf of the seller, on behalf of the supplier. Okay, and the following transactions are allowed for self-built e-invoice. Example, when you pay, when you do a payment to agents dealers, distributors, right? So like what I mentioned just now, all right? If you are uh, like agent, right? Selling car or whatnot, then if you are included. Lah. Goods sold or services provided by a foreign suppliers. Example, Amazon web store, you buy from US, they have freaking no idea what is the Malaysian e-invoice and they are not uh, not subject to the local rules and regulations so there's no way that they can give you an e-invoice following our regulations for that case you have to you cannot say no uh, you have to issue a self bill e-invoice on behalf of the foreign entity to prove your expenses okay profit distribution okay if you're selling i mean you are there's an exchange of shares for your company e-commerce transaction not we are not getting a lot of information about this so even in the guideline itself it says to be confirmed okay more details to be reviewed later pay out to all the betting and gaming winners so this is more to the gaming side lah. goods sold or services provided by individual tax payers right like some um, some someone giving you uh, something uh, but they are not a business so and they cannot be properly issuing e-invoice for whatever reason then you have to take whatever receipt or whatever proof that they have provided you you have to issue the e-invoice yourself okay so that is the meaning of self-built e-invoice okay pretty pretty straightforward okay transaction involving payments to middlemen okay like just now i mentioned uh, agents dealers distributor and one of the more classic example that I can give here is give you an example. David works as a sales agent as at Tesla Sunday Bahad. Okay. David here is an agent. Okay. And Tesla is the seller, is the merchant. And he is entitled following whatever contract he has with Tesla, entitled for 10% commission for every motorcycles that he sold, right? And he managed to sell a 45,000 electric motorcycle to Shafi being the buyer okay now we have three uh, entities here uh, seller agent and buyer so of course sitting in between is the agent all right and buyer will be buying that 40 uh, I mean the, the buyer yes will be buying the 45,000 from the seller and for the services that was provided by agent so he's entitled for that 10% commission lah. so how do you go about that in that case there's only two steps for this scenario because Tesla is selling uh, directly to somewhat directly to Shafi okay so in this case Tesla the seller will issue the e invoice to Shafi okay which is the consumer but again it's a mandatory e invoice for automotive that you saw just now so the Shafi Shafi cannot say no just give me normal invoice for Dula okay it is it, not going to happen Tesla must issue an e invoice to Shafi that is end of the story. It's just like normal issue using my invoice, issue using their assisting system. On the other hand, Tesla also need to issue a self-built e-invoice to David. Okay, let's say David is just an individual with no access to whatever system. Then in this case, Tesla can issue a self-built e-invoice to prove the expense, expenses, 10% given to David. For that commission uh, earned 
So that is an example of a, a middleman. That's an example of a mandatory e-invoice. That is an example of self-built e-invoice all together in one single example, right? Cross, uh, Cross-border transactions, we're talking about you are buying something from overseas or you are the provider, okay? You're selling something to a uh, foreign buyer. For these two, right, it's actually covered. It's all mentioned before. So I just have to sh quickly let you know that foreign sellers are not mandated to implement Malaysia's e-invoice. So that is, the, that is why, okay, they can continue to issue the invoice the usual way. Or whatever that you have been getting now, continue to, to, to tag in the same thing. But Malaysia buyer, you are required to issue self-built e-invoice. Okay, because the, the other party can't do it, you have to do it. Lah. Okay, so that is when you import. When you are exporting, because you are a Malaysian entity, you are mandated to implement Malaysia's e-invoice, of course. So it's fairly, fairly straightforward. Lah. Okay, as a local seller, you're supposed to issue e-invoice to record the income. Okay, of course, the foreign entity, they, uh, they don't have any TIN number, so you just use a generic TIN number provided by LHDN. That is it, okay? So it's just that, okay? So coming to uh, almost final um, final slide, okay? This is also very important. It affects every single one of you, okay? Yeah, whether you are, whether you are the boss, you are the, the employee, okay? Pay attention to this. Employees are required to request for e-invoice. Whatever claims, right, don't care. You are supposed to request for e-invoice from the supplier to be issued to their employer. Right? Whatever's the name of heart, okay? Your, you yourself, right? Whatever, whatever expenses that you are already aware that you have to, you, you will claim with the company, confirm already, yeah? Make sure you have the company's team number, okay? So then you can actually do that. Lah. So that has to be validated, okay? But some concession given here, uh, LHDN understand sometimes it's very hard, right? So Right now, I don't know whether this is going to change, but at this time uh, point, at this point of time, LHDN allows e-invoice to be issued in the name of the employee, your name, possible. Okay, no need to be the um, no need to be the sub, the employer's name. Okay, so this is allowed. In the event that foreign supplier, same thing, Amazon Web Store, you 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 buy something from a foreign entity. Uh, this is another concession given that LHDN allow foreign suppliers original receipt, okay, from US. No need to issue e uh, self bill e invoice, okay. You can use that as a proof. So this is still allowed at the moment, okay. So it affects everyone, like I said just now, because you can no longer deal with uh, the the traditional receipts is. If example, uh, if it's in our company also, uh, we were also told that uh, moving forward, this is not going to be supported. Okay, if they do not, do not provide an uh, e-invoice, we are just going to reject the claim. That's it. Okay, so that is going to be the future in one or two years time time for expenses uh, for the employees benefits and claims lah. Okay, so um, coming to a conclusion already, what's the impact for for having all this? Okay, very important. The invoice, right? It's it's the change to your operations. Yeah, the invoice is now considered finalized. The moment that you create, you set, you create an e invoice. No more editing. Okay, now we have a lot of our users. Yeah, uh, they use our software to edit the invoice back and forth and keep sending the revised version to the customer. That can no longer be done. Okay, as soon as that is created as an e-invoice, you cannot make adjustment already. The only thing that you can do is that 72 hours time frame that uh, either side, one of the side can request to reject or you can also reject it. As a, as a seller, you can reject it. Okay, you can cancel it like, basically, but you cannot make changes. Okay, if you make something, make some mistakes, you have to cancel it, you have to create another one. Or otherwise, you create a credit note to overcome that. The, the difference okay adjustment like i say have to be going through invoices debit not credit not already 
no more bad dating, post dating transaction. Oh, a lot of people love it. Like I, I bet I will post that well, for the one whole year and then you transfer all the money to me. It's going to be very hard moving forward. Okay, and also no more bad dating is very hard also. Okay, you can't do that anymore. Okay. Um, no more creating invoices using uh, Excel or Word. If some of you are still doing it, uh, you better start looking for an alternative now already. Because yes, you can still do it after the implementation of e-invoice. You see, you can issue Excel, right? And then later go to my invoice to, to, to generate everything as an e-invoice. But trust me, you will suffer. It's a lot of time uh, wasted. For your businesses okay so better look for some kind of software lah. okay and lastly okay i don't know whether any one of you but uh, just to share under the table deal is going to be a lot harder right because uh, the other party that you're dealing with what if they are requested for e invoice and you cannot say no okay so there's no more no more possibility of going under the table so everything has to be tracked because the other party want to the claim one to actually prove for the expenses. So yeah, under the table deals, it's going to be uh, very difficult uh, moving forward. Okay, so where to seek help? If you all have a lot of questions, all right, not just today, I can help you with a QA. and a What if after this, okay, you can call your accountants, okay? Most likely, they are the more knowledgeable uh, among everyone else that you can get help from. Uh, or the e-invoice related, you can of course contact your software vendors, whether it's Buku or any other software. Okay, they should know about it lah because they are also very busy waiting for the development kits. The uh, HDN uh, they are supposed to come up with the the final specification uh, this 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 month or next month. Then we have we all have to start working on uh, implementing it already. So we are all very busy. We are all very fairly knowledgeable with. What's going on lah, okay and of course you can contact FHDN they have even given you a email address but trust me you can you can try but I, I there's no there's no um, there's no um, is there's no guarantee that they will actually reply because imagine there's so many million of users million of uh, taxpayer having questions so it's very oh it's going to be very overwhelming for them as well so the best your best bet would be your accountants and your software vendors lah. okay so lastly okay if you are not already a Boku user of course if you are a Boku user most likely you are already aware that we will definitely be covering you end-to-end uh, -end for everything that you saw already we already have prototype if you are not a Boku user you know, just wanted to share a little bit that we definitely be supporting e-invoice and there's no fees involved it's entirely included in our existing um, systems okay all right so now we are done with finally this whole session is like taking one hour plus okay almost on time okay so now let's jump to the q a session already i will try my best to take the questions okay if you haven't already sent in your question feel feel free to just uh, send in and then i will uh, try to uh, my best to answer okay Okay, I got this very first question here. Uh, businesses under 500,000 need to pay uh, SST or just required to use? Okay, the answer is straightforward. Okay, if you are under 500,000, there's no need for you to pay uh, SST. Of course, F&B is a different case. 1.5 million, that's the threshold. But one of the points I mentioned just now is e-invoice, no threshold. You are supposed to do it. Okay, so the answer to you is that I think, I think if you are not if you're under 500,000, no need to for SST, but e-invoice, definitely yes. Okay. All right, let's see if I have more questions. Okay, I've got this question here. Let's try to tackle this. Um, the invoice from the accounting system must use the same format as per IRBN requirement. Uh, not, no need to be exactly the same, but the component needs to be there. Okay, uh, uh, something to validate uh, signature and all that. Uh, in fact, if you if you don't already know, okay, um, LHDN they will have their e invoice version. Okay, I mean the, the 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 document with everything there. Okay, and you can continue to have another uh, uh, invoice generated by your existing invoice 
or in invoicing system, point of sale system, it doesn't have to be exactly the same, but the component needs to be there. Okay, so I would say you don't have to worry so much about it. Okay, your know, whatever system, as long as uh, it can be supporting the upcoming requirement, you can you you, you don't have to worry about the look and feel of the invoice, lah. Okay. Um, let's look at the next question. Okay, to what extent, as a Buku subscriber, we have to prepare for this new regime, or Buku will later be ready to integrate with uh, HDN portal? We do not have to do anything, almost do not have to do anything, but some of the requirements, which is something that I don't bother sharing, there are some certain data fields, like they will ask for uh, your MSIC code, example, your industry, where are you coming from, we will roll out in different stages, okay? So starting ne next year, you will start getting prom, okay? Please key in your MSIC code because everything is going to be needed in the future. So you can expect almost seamless um, onboarding process to the e to counting down the e invoicing if you are using our Buku system lah. So for time being, uh, no action needed. Okay, having this attended this session is more than good enough. You at least you are aware what to do, what not to do. Whether you do a consolidated one or you do a usual one. Okay, I hope I answer your question. Where do we update our team number in accounting system? Again, it's going to be a question being asked in the near future. And there will be a place where you can key in your TIN number and as well as updating your TIN number. And most importantly, your customer's TIN number, there will be a way, a place for you to key in moving forward. Without this information, you are not able to issue uh, e invoice in the future with our system or any other system. All right. Um, all buyer and seller must have an email address. The answer is yes. Okay, it's a mandatory already uh, uh, provided, already being told by HDN that um, both sides is a mandatory field need to have an email address. So if you don't already have one, you have to create one lah. Okay, which is fairly straightforward lah. Can I, can we have a copy of this slides? Yes, more than happy. In fact, we will be sharing this record a video uh, after this. So yes, you can have everything uh, in case you want to re refer back with anything. If not B2B, but business to individual or consumer, do I need an uh, e-invoice too? So the answer is yes, lah, okay? Uh, but consolidated one until your customer or your individual, individual ask for the e-invoice, okay? Uh, for overseas client, where can we get the generic generic TIN number? Okay, it's actually stated in the document. Okay, so it's already there. Okay, but moving forward, we will, if you are our user, we will share all this information in the article. Lah. Okay, if you can't find the article from your vendor, you can try to ask around. Okay, so that's already defined. Or you try to look from that 100 over pages. Okay, so that, that's, uh, that's something that you can get from the document. Lah. Okay. Can a buyer provide a different invoice, uh, email for different invoice? Um, if you are using our system, using some kind of system, I would say yes. But if you are using my invoice portal, most likely it's already preset. Lah, because you can, you can change it, but you have to change. You go in different place, imagine. You go to a different place to change it, then later you issue invoice. And next invoice, before you issue, you have to change it again. That is what I would think of. Lah. But if you're using any system, uh, I think it should be fairly uh, straightforward. Yes, so the answer is yes. Just how you, you are going to do it is it's going to be tricky. Lah. Okay, depending, depending on which approach you, you are going with. Okay, um, is there a pen penalty for lead submission for consolidated invoice? Not stated. Not stated. Most likely, I think they are going to go easy, but don't quote me for that. Ah. They're going to go easy for during the early day uh, until later. Okay. So, but I mean, the point is that you should try your best to avoid that lah, because they have every rights to, to, to penalize you, to penalty, to actually apply penalty on, on any, any late, late payment or any late submission. Okay, so try your best to do that. So, but it's unclear, they never mentioned anything about a penalty yet. If the staff is buying for pantry, uh, yes, yes. Uh, not to say immediately, but a way to actually, eventually you need to get an e-invoice. 
before you submit for claim okay you submit for your company the company has moving forward it's not just our company yeah your company is also going to say no if you give them the usual uh, receipts because they cannot use that it's, it's useless anymore it's, it's, it's useless moving forward okay so that is what you need to do lah, moving forward okay how about a seller that started on the 1st of July 2025 but the buyer is starting okay you don't have to worry about this so you just have to think yourself if you are a seller okay then you just follow the timeline okay so the buyer is sorry the the buyer side is up to them okay of course if they decided to go ahead before the timeline they will inform you lah okay they should they're supposed to tell you that i i need an e invoice already so then you just give you e invoice as is lah so with that they you should also ask for the just just go with your usual way lah ask for the tin number and everything okay so you don't have to worry about the other side but if they ask for uh, e invoice you need to prepare one for them okay um, consolidated e-invoice can be generated within seven days after the month end but e-invoice date and time is always current okay so the info the sales will be captured in which month good question okay i don't think i have an answer for this It's a very good question okay um if following the the time submission it's definitely the following month but i strongly believe there's a way to state that this is actually uh, for last month this one i think you can try if you are our user you can try contacting us uh, hopefully i can find you the answer uh, after this okay i also would like to find out more about this okay intercompany transactions we need to raise debit not is invo e invoice needed uh yes as long as a different entity is actually needed you need to do regardless because uh, from legal standpoint, uh, your intercompany is still different entity unless you're talking about the same company. Okay, if you're talking about inter is a group of company, then yes. But if within the same company, same entity, then no need. Okay. Uh, construction industry, a lot of claims for manpower, work, part-time job. How do we do about this? Uh, treat it as a normal claim. Hmm, this is a tricky question for me. Um, a lot of claims, depending on who you are dealing with. I mean, if the part-time job people, I think you might need to do a self-built e-invoice if the other party are not able to do that. I don't know whether they are foreigner or, or local, uh, uh, work, worker, worker, local people, but I think the most likely case would be self-built e-invoice. For whatever because that is the expenses for you okay so end of the day you have to prove the expenses then you have you somewhat need to have an e-invoice no choice so if the other part, party cannot give you the e-invoice then you have to issue an e-invoice yourself okay for clinic if the visit by if the visit by staff but paid by a panel the e-invoice is to give to who wow hmm the staff of the panel company okay this is yet another tricky question uh, let me try to get around with this if the visit is uh i think end of the day as long as it's, it is a uh, expenses you need to have an e-invoice right so but the e-invoice is expenses paid by you to who is the question I think the e invoice should be going to the staff. To the staff, okay. Panel company is just like a middleman, all right. So I think, but I cannot be sure. I cannot be hundred percent sure that this is um, going to the staff. But more, more slightly, is actually a staff lah, okay. Okay. Wow. Um, can you can you help to explain the example for few number? 18 to 21, 27, 30, 36. Unfortunately, I am not able to do that. I, in front of my computer, I don't have access to the, the specification. So if, our, if you are uh, one of our Buku users, so please contact our team and uh, we will try our best to find out for you, okay?
Okay, uh, same thing. Uh, this is related to the fields. So if the billing period, if the invoice is 28, um, that is, if I'm not mistaken, for statement, uh, which is a period of time. So um, if the invoice date is 28, um, not necessarily uh, the billing period, it can be anything, depending on what you can define. If, if that is meant for January, even you issue invoice on the February, you have to state the month clearly, lah, okay? Otherwise, you put a NA, it's good enough, but depending on your case. Lah. Commission paid uh, to staff and paid into salary appear under salary slip. Any e invoice relay, uh, involved? Um, commission paid is self-built e invoice just now I mentioned, okay? Paid into salary. Salary is another, uh, another thing that is a bit of uncertainty. Um, I don't have uh, information with me right now. I, uh, we can help you to find out after this, right? So yeah, that's what I can tell you. Lah. Okay. Okay, let's see if I have more questions. Do we need to issue e-invoice to foreign customers? Um, yes, yes. Just now, it was, there was a slide mentioning that you need to put in a generic uh, foreign T number. Okay, yep. No worries. Will Buku be introducing a Proforma invoice feature? And what is the expected timeline for the e-invoicing feature to go live? Um, we are right now looking at the first quarter, which is end of uh, March. Hopefully we can go live, but then we're still waiting for LHDN to provide us with the, the developer kits. Lah, okay, so will Buku be introducing Performa invoice? Yes, but then uh, just a, a point that I should highlight here, <coughs> Performa invoice should not be going to e-invoice. So everything is going to be the within your uh, accounting or invoicing system until you are ready to go and uh, issue the e-invoice. So I suppose for only the approved invoices, are, uh, only those are needed to actually go to uh, LHDN. Okay. If the service or purchases was done at the end of the month, not able to request for e-invoice anymore the next day, which is the next? Okay, that's a bit of trick. A uh, tricky case because, uh, as mentioned just now, uh, the rule says that within the same month you need to request. So, if that is the case, I think on the spot you should request for the e invoice already instead of like still, let's say the the owner insists of giving you a normal receipt. I think you should try to reject and say, uh, there's not enough time for me to actually submit for for um, uh, convert into the e invoice. Okay, so. I think you should uh, request on the spot. Uh, what about seller giving uh, FOC samples to uh, customers? Um, if it is going to be a zero ringgit invoice, um, of course it has no impact to your, it's, it's like zero income, zero expenses for both sides. Lah. I think it's optional in my opinion, but there's no guideline about this yet. Okay, there's no guideline about this. So for me, it, it's a, it is the same lah, because in order to prove for LHDN to prove your income or anything, it means nothing. Okay, so I doubt if they want you to do that. Lah. Okay, so that is my answer for now. Okay, for consolidated invoices, if there are 10 invoices that were e-invoice, that does this 10 invoices? No, if already e-invoices, it won't be uh, included under consolidated. So let's say for the previous month, you have 10, uh, you, you make 10 sales, okay? And all of 10 sales are normal receipts, and one of them converted into the e-invoice. So you will only have to issue a consolidated one for that nine outstanding uh, normal invoices, okay? So you won't be, there won't be double, okay? You have to make sure that doesn't happen, lah, okay? Otherwise, it's uh, going to be a problem. What is MSIC code? It's actually defined by one of the authority, like whether you are doing e-commerce, you're selling, you're doing F&B, you are selling clothes, there are certain uh, code that you are assigned with. The, the moment, the time that you open your Sanyam Baha so pro partnership, right? In case you don't know, lah, it's already there, okay? It's actually stated somewhere, okay? So moving forward, it's also one of the 
a requirement to actually key in. Okay, the LHDN needs to know this company doing what. Okay, so part of the requirement is when you issue invoice, the supplier information, what is the supplier's MSIC code? That needs to be included. Uh, staff claim, any timeline for, I don't think so. Okay, I don't think so, right? Uh, I don't see any rules. Like if you have a receipt in July and you only submitted August, then you just assume, uh, consider that an August thing. Lah. Okay. Um, can I share this session to my team? More than happy. All right. Later, you can try to get uh, the link from us, and then we can actually you can actually find out about that. Lah. Okay. Uh, staff claims needs to be submitted within seven days, right? Um, not necessarily. That has nothing to do with the seven days because the seven days is only meant for the consolidated one. Because for staff claim, they are supposed to request for the actual e-invoice, not the consolidated one. So that has nothing to do. Lah. So the time that they submit, then they only you consider that the month for, for the expense claim. Lah. Okay, I hope you answered the question. Is all Buku version coming with e-invoicing feature or only the advanced version okay i i cannot speak on behalf of the company yet okay we haven't had that conversation but there's a very high chance that we are just going to open for everyone even the free version because this is a mandate by the government and we would we want to put our users in a in a, a giving more trouble to our users lah. okay how about most of my raw materials brought from overseas taobao okay taobao it's a foreign uh, seller, okay? So they do not have a team number. So you have to do a self-built e-invoice. You have to do it yourself, okay? Let's see. Okay, a lot of questions here. I'll try to answer. How about issuing uh, PI? Um, I think you are, you are, you are referring to uh, purchase invoice prior to invoicing uh, for buyer to make payment. Um, what if the buyer doesn't request from us? The buyer, okay, a little bit confused here, okay. So if the buyer doesn't request for e invoice, so of course uh, the default is you can issue normal invoice. But if they want the e invoice, they have to you you need to provide a way for them to convert into e invoice lah, which is likely covered by your whatever system, okay. And they need to do it within the same month, which is uh, mentioned just now. All right. What's the credit note and debit note? This is a bit of more on the accounting or transaction side, but uh, just a quick one. Credit note is actually a reduce, uh, going down of your invoice value. Debit is an increase. Debit note is an increase of the original agreed value. Let's say originally, you have, your invoice is ten thousand. You want to make it fifteen thousand, then you use a credit note. Uh, use a ten debit note lah. Okay. So that needs to be submitted. Everything here. That mention needs to be submitted to e invoice lah. Okay. If self built e invoice and the other party do not want to review the the IC number, afraid and NR the IC number will fall into scammer. Uh, self bill. Um. I think I don't have a solution for that. Okay, moving forward. If it's needed, then you have to ask for it, and they have to give you. Otherwise, you can't be issuing. Okay, and you can you can you can make a deal with them basically because you also don't want to put yourself in in trouble. Okay, that's what I I can uh, I can think of lah. Uh, well, Buku provide apps to issue e invoice more easier on mobile apps. Oh yeah, um, our mobile app is coming soon next year. I don't know whether we can get it in time with the e invoice launch. But it should be first half of next year, so definitely will be ready for most of you lah. Because it's only coming in uh, first August. Uh, I think we still have time, so uh, very high chance that we have a mobile apps for you. Okay. Does all invoices for expenses purposes will have to be yes, yes. If you want to prove that yes, if you don't bother with it, it's just a tiny little bit. But for businesses, usually everything lah. But as a consumer, like I say just now, I go to uh, 99 Speed Mart to buy an ice cream, that's not needed. Lah. That's like uh, too much. Okay, so as a business, most likely, yes. Okay. Uh, if not mistaken, staff claims like medical 
uh, patrol hotel can be staff name but must make sure the staff is in there yes that's also mentioned there mentioned just now uh, HDN allows that to happen okay and normally they submit claims once a month so um, no it's not self-billing it's it's provided by the supplier okay it should be provided by the supplier instead of uh, someone doing the self-billing okay yep I think I'm almost done with all the questions okay if point of sale system and accounting system not the same system what is the problem that you're seeing very good question okay very good question to end uh, our session today okay see let's say you are using um, some point of sale system I throw some random example store hub lah. at the point that you uh, you do the sales you have the sales it's it is likely going to be um, a normal invoice okay and later on it has to it can be converted into e invoice this part supposed to be uh, handled by the policy system okay if you have any other uh, sales outside of the point of sale system that you are you are creating from Buku itself that also needs to be an e-invoice again that is trigger from Buku side end of the month you import everything into Buku okay there needs to be a way to tell our system which is work in progress with our vendors all right to tell the user to, to tell the, the system that this invoice coming in from store hub is already an e invoice there's no need to to consolidate again okay so that is likely going to be the case lah. okay so yeah that is our um, last questions all right thanks a lot for the time right so it's quite a, a, a big crowd today like more than 200 of you right really appreciate you guys like, joining today again I like, just want to share that uh, the session is being recorded and then we will actually publish in the shortest time possible hopefully monday okay so if you uh you just go to youtube you will be able to find lah. just search for our channel okay if you want to do a bit of uh, revise okay you want to share with your uh, your internal team feel free to do that and that concludes my session today and that's that is all that i think everything almost everything that you need to know as a business owner as a consumer Thanks a lot and I hope to see you guys in the near future. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye.